We're spending more money than ever before to get what we want when we want it. But we're paying a high price for our world of infinite choice. How long do you think it takes the whole of Britain to throw away seven tons of clothes? Especially when it comes to food. Millions of people in Britain are struggling to pay their food bills. Yet a third of all the food we produce never gets eaten. That has to be wrong. Oh my god, you do get a better class of waste at Waitrose. Oh, beautiful pears. With your help, I want to do something about it. Who or what is telling you that these can't go to your supermarket clients, <laughs> the supermarkets themselves? I want to persuade our biggest corporations to stop wasting millions of tons of food. You're throwing away one million birds a year. What do you think of that figure? And I want to see what we can do to waste less food ourselves. Look at that. That's naughty. I think there's at least one good tea left in here. I don't think you should throw it away. Because what we chuck away at home is costing the average British family £700 a year. That's out of date. That can go. It's all from August. It's only the 12th of August today. You throw them out. It's time we all declared war on waste. throwing away, at home, over 4 million tonnes of perfectly good food. That's 88 million of these wheelie bins full of food that's perfectly good to eat and we're chucking it away. Our supermarkets certainly know how to sell us stuff. We pile up our trolleys with multi-packs and special offers, but most of us buy food that we're never going to eat. And on average, we end up binning a day's worth every week. So today, I'm going to save a few people the trouble of taking home the food that they'll end up throwing away. Excuse me, can I just talk to you for a couple of minutes about your shopping? Okay, sure. Yeah? Okay, so, 16% of the food we take home, we throw away. Do you recognise yourself in that statistic? A little bit. Do you throw some of your food away? Um, yeah, yeah. Like when it goes past its sell-by yeah, date? Yes, or... yeah. To save you the trouble of taking it home, I thought we could throw some of your food away right here. Right. So, so for example, have you by any chance got any carrots here today? Yes. Yeah. So, yes. a quarter of all the carrots we buy are thrown away at home. So, can we start by binning one of your carrots? Go on, why not? Thank you very much. <laughs> one of the carrots. Two and a half kilos of potatoes. A quarter of all of them. But you're going to throw them away anyway. <laughs> That seems fair, doesn't it? One more for luck. <laughs> but have you got a salad? You can't open that. I'm really sorry. Oh. Look, a third of all our boxed and bagged salads, a third of them <laughs> get chucked away. Why did you pick up me? Terrific start. <laughs> you know, we throw away a surprising amount of milk. <gasps> no. Oh, Just God. a little slosh. Oh, that's terrible. What have you got here? That's my mother's. That's my mother's. Do not take it. She loves the bread. We're throwing away 25%. So that's about that much. Maybe a bit more. Ah, grapes. You've got grapes. Just about 20%. <laughs> Just shake a few off. Ooh. You've only bought half a cucumber. Yeah, and it was reduced. I'm going to reduce it a bit more. Do you know we throw away 10% of all our yoghurt? OK. More than one of these goes in the bin. I'll let you off with one. Just don't punch me. <laughs> Taking people's food off them when they've just bought it is really difficult. Oh, yeah, but nationally, this percentage of our shopping, of our food, is being binned. So whether we do it here or whether they do it at home at the end of the week when it doesn't look so good, the waste is the same. About that much. Do you know why I'm throwing your food away? Because that's what people do, they throw their food away. Cereals, 10%. 10%? One in six, 
10% of cheese, 5% of all our biscuits. Strawberries, 13%. You should be able to do something with that. You should be able to yeah, I'm thinking of a recipe even now. Even taking relatively small amounts of food off people and binning them feels horrible. It just brings it home to me what uh, a shocking amount of food and therefore money we're all wasting. I'll be coming back to Manchester looking for ways to reduce the amount we chuck away at home. But we're only part of the problem. Millions of tonnes of perfectly good food is being destroyed before it even leaves the farm. I got in touch with over 50 UK farmers who between them supply the major supermarkets. But for some reason, hardly any of them wanted to talk on camera. One of the few exceptions was Norfolk veg farmers, the Hammonds. They've been growing parsnips on Tattersett Farm for three generations. Ollie and his mum, Debs, are harvesting and packing seven days a week. But the business is up against it. The price of a small bag of parsnips has dropped by 15p in two years. But a big part of the problem is the parsnips that aren't making it into the bags. Now, we're looking for two sizes here, Hugh. We're looking for a pre-packed size, and yes. then we're also looking for the larger, loose size. But that's one key, so that won't go See, in. I love that. I love that I curve yeah, on that. So that can't go in. That one's too big. Too big? What's wrong with too that short. one? Too short. Too short? short. Yeah. Far too short. They're all too small. Almost all supermarket fruit and veg is graded using strict cosmetic standards that define to the millimetre exactly what's acceptable. Some of the produce that fails this beauty contest can be sold as animal feed or used in other products like soup or salad. But the rest is left to rot or else ploughed back into the ground. Your professional pickers here have rejected that. The shape. The shape. You're, you're top heavy. Such a lovely basket. Yeah. Wonky. So do you feel that today you're looking at a crop that's grading quite well? Yes, this is a good crop. So we're very lucky. Yeah, we're quite well, pleased with how this field's turned out. I guess one of the things that's a bit sad about this process is we're not even looking for the bad ones and chucking them away. We're searching for the beautiful ones and everything else is getting rejected. That just seems to be the wrong way around. Am I allowed to put that one on? Borderline, you. Borderline, you see, when Deb says borderline, I know she means no, but I, I'm, <laughs> I hope I don't get this whole lot sent back, but for me, that's going in. I don't care what anyone says, it's too good not to. But it's too short, Hugh. Is it? Yep. Oh. According to Ollie, most farmers are just too scared to speak out and criticise the supermarkets that pay them. There's always some veg that gets rejected because of poor quality, but losing so much of their crop to cosmetic standards is the final straw for the Hammonds. Are you effectively producing at cost at the moment? Yes. Yes. Do you expect to make a profit on the no. farm this year? No. None? None. Right. Really? How yep. long has it been like that? How long have we been in Probably that, in that cycle? Probably longer than, than is, is good for us as a family business. If this continues, what's the future? Closure, basically. Arguably, you should be pulling the plug right now. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. If grandfather yep. was around today, he would have said, guys, you've done your best. You're up against the odds now. Let's call it a day. Yeah. What's the point coming up here seven days a week to do this for... For no, you know, for nothing. Just to keep my girls in, you know, a place of work. You're upset, aren't you? Sorry. That's all right. That's all right. I mean. <laughs> They're just such great products, aren't they? Mm. And they're grown with so much passion. Where's Ollie gone? 
Is he a bit old? He's upset too now. It's a big fight. Yeah. A big, big fight. Ollie's grandfather started the farm in the 1970s. Back then, he never had to waste crops because of cosmetic standards. And now the Hammond family are close to calling it a day. It's not a pretty sight for my eyes, anyway. No. It's far too much. Just under a week's worth here. That's less than a week? Yeah, less than a week, yeah. Are you sure you're not overreacting to their instructions just a little? No. no. If we sent an order in one day to a supermarket with these parsnips, it would get rejected and then return to us the next day. Really? Yeah. Any idea what the total tonnage, that's your full week's waste, how many tonnes is that? You're looking at nearly 20 tonnes of waste parsnips. We haven't yet mentioned the name of the supermarket you mainly supply. Are you happy to tell me who they are? Yeah, yeah. for sure. Yeah. So who, who are these parsnips being supplied to? They were, they were destined for Morrison's. Is um, that the only supermarket you supply? Yes. OK. Of course, Morrison's are not the only supermarket whose cosmetic standards cause massive waste on our farms. It's happening all over Britain, wasting not just food, but all the energy, resources and manpower that goes into producing it. Twenty-eight shopping trolleys, full. And from here, it doesn't look like we've even made a dent in your no. pile. No, no. Such a waste. Think how many people we could feed. I know, I know. So we might have done a tenth? Probably yeah. not even. No. Say we've fun. just done a tenth. Yeah. yeah. Then we'd have 280, if we did the whole lot, 280 yeah. trolleys. That would go right through that gate down to the road. Yeah. And every single one is edible. Yeah. Absolutely shocking. I'm going to chase Morrison's for an interview so they can give their side of the story. And I think we should be challenging all the supermarkets to step up and address this crazy waste of food. But if we want them to listen to us, then I think we have to be ready to do our bit at home too. I've selected Gardner Road in Prestwich, Greater Manchester to be part of a nine-week experiment. I want to see if I can help the residents here to stop throwing away so much food. Before I tell them what I'm up to, they're going to have a sneaky peek at exactly what's in their bins. Oh, heaviest so far, a full to overflowing. Hang on with that. Yeah, no, I've got, I've got it. I've got right? it. It's very, very full though. A lot of foodie stuff in here. Look at that. That's naughty. Two days out of date. I could have spun a meal out of that. Eggy bread for breakfast, bread pudding. I didn't come to Prestwich to find Britain's worst food wasters. I came because they're no different here from the rest of us, which means most of the households are binning, on average, about 15 quid's worth of food a week. A couple of onion barges here, Alan, look good enough to eat. You hungry? Help, help yourself. Hello, you're loitering. Yeah. Is that something else for the bin? It's so chef. What is it? Food. That's got another two weeks to go. Two weeks to go. It's I know, not. But it's been opened. How long has it been opened? About three days. Do you know what that smells like to me? <laughs> Good so bacon. bacon. <laughs> Good bacon. Okay. What about the eggs? They're out of date. Yesterday. Do you know there's a trick for how you can tell whether eggs are fresh? No. You put them in a bowl of water, and if they sink to the bottom, they're completely fresh. If they float to the top, chuck them. You I don't trust me, do you? I didn't know that. I think there's at least one good tea left in here. I don't think you should throw it away. OK. Is that all right? Yeah. 
Thank you, Karen. Okay. You really want to get rid of it, don't you? <laughs> Not today. Bye. Bye, Karen. Meanwhile, I'll get rid of this. Thank okay. you. I'm convinced that armed with a few thrifty recipes, Karen and the rest of Gardner Road can waste less food and save money into the bargain. But tasty ingredients aren't the only things that are popping up in the grey bins. Surely that's too good to throw away. You better to go out tonight. Well, go with your boots. <laughs> Have we missed you, sir? How's the recycling going? Not bad. Yeah, not bad. So yeah. there's nothing in this bin that shouldn't be in there, is that right? Clang, what was that? I don't know. <laughs> You might think we've all got pretty good at recycling these days, but nationally, more than half of what we're chucking in our general waste isn't meant to be there. So I want to see what else we've collected this morning. Wow. Should we dive in? Yeah. Well, maybe not dive in, but have a closer look. Yeah, certainly. There's plenty more food in this mountain of trash, along with huge amounts of tins, bottles, jars and plastic, all of which should have been recycled. That is a quality saucepan. Unbelievable, isn't it? Measuring jugs. This is all good charity shop stuff. We're a wasteful society. But most shocking, perhaps, are the piles and piles of decent-looking clothes. That looks really nearly new. This is typical of every street in Britain. When you bundle all our wasted clothes together, we're chucking away about £400,000 worth every day. The government spent millions trying to get us to sort our rubbish, but clearly the message isn't hitting home. And we're wasting a spectacular amount of good, usable stuff. Because once it's in the grey bins, everything we chuck away is usually incinerated or buried in landfill. I don't think we're even close to getting halfway through the pile yet. And I can't help wondering whether the community that produced all this waste in the first place, if they had a second look at it like this, they might just think again about all this great stuff they're chucking and all this recycling that they're not doing. So I've decided that I'm not only asking the residents of Gardner Road to stop wasting good food, I'm going to challenge them to reform their rubbish habits across the board and become top recyclers as well. Evening, how are you doing? All right, thank you. Thank you. Would you all like to gather round? Don't be shy. Now, I've already been pounding the streets in Prestwich, just in this corner around these houses, and I bumped into one or two of you yesterday, but I looked a little bit different. <laughs> and yes, I started taking your bins apart. <laughs> I found some really unusual things. Lovely pair of fluffy slippers. They were a bit slimy, to be honest. But we popped them in the wash, <laughs> given them a blow dry. They've come up all lovely and shiny and almost new. Look at these. Aren't they sweet? Absolutely brand new porcelain piglets. Could they find love, these three piglets? <laughs> yes. All of this stuff was collected from your dustbins but if anyone here tonight wants to take it home, that's absolutely fine by us. Yes? Do you want that TV screen? <laughs> <laughs> so the rubbish revolution starts here, in this quiet, friendly corner of Greater Manchester. You've really looted the place, haven't you? You're not going home empty-handed. I'll be posting recipes on Twitter and Facebook to help them rescue food they might be tempted to chuck. Is that not working for you? It's not going to lie, not oh, really. Okay. <laughs> I'll, take, I'll take this. You can take him home. <laughs> and I want to persuade them to stop binning clothes, furniture, toys, and anything else that can be recycled. So, I'm just going to ask you, who's up for seeing what we can do to change the way Britain deals with waste? <laughs> a couple of no's in the front. Let's... <laughs> I know it's a big ask, but if they can get their rubbish sorted here, then it could be a blueprint for the rest of Britain to waste less too. Of course, I also need to talk to the guys who didn't come to the park. The ones who, like many of us, I suspect, 
are a bit sceptical about whether recycling really makes a difference. I've had a tip-off that a woman called Kelly, who works in a local cafe, is already convinced that my rubbish revolution is, well, a bit rubbish. So you two work together? Yeah. yeah. That is Kelly's rubbish? Correct. And that's how you do it? Yeah. <laughs> You've got plastic bottles, food, tin cans, lots of paper, tea bags. They're not lonely, they're all together. It's easy, one bag, in the bin, done. And then do you come along and resort that out? Yeah. Who's the boss, if I might ask? And, and what do you think of the way she does it? She drives me mad. So, uh, how, how come you haven't fired her yet? Because she loves me. <laughs> and don't you think that looks... It looks neat, but so what, what's the difference? It's rubbish. Kelly's been talking to her customers in the cafe, and she thinks I haven't got a hope of getting the whole community to improve their recycling. So, have you heard about this local campaign to try and get everyone in the community to, to get I a little... I don't think that we should really do it, to be fair, by ourselves. I don't think it should be our job. We pay council tax, we pay a lot of things. It should be their job. <laughs> OK. Do you think they're all wasting their time? Yeah. What yeah. do you think happens to it all in the end? It all gets crushed together. So, you're not convinced that, that it's even being recycled? No. The plastic bottles, yeah, tin everything. cans, glass, yeah. it all ends up in the same yeah. place? They're lying to you. Yeah, like always. As far as I can tell, Kelly's mind is made up. Recycling is rubbish. What I don't know is how many people think like that, because actually, if most people think like that, well, recycling hasn't got a chance. I'm on the lookout for a few more local skeptics like Kelly, and I'm hatching a plan to challenge their skepticism head on. But if wasting good materials makes no sense, then dumping good food while millions of people in Britain are going hungry is surely completely unacceptable. A little while ago, I visited Tattersett Farm. Their huge pile of parsnips is just a tiny fraction of the produce being wasted in the UK. All because, according to the supermarkets, we won't buy veg that doesn't look perfect. It's putting families and generations of farmers out of business. Before I tangle with one of our most powerful retailers, I want to understand more about cosmetic standards and the problems they're causing our farmers. So I'm meeting the founder of an organisation called Feedback. For the last six years, Tristram Stewart has been fighting to get supermarkets to reduce their waste. I've seen shockingly huge piles of waste. Not just of waste, but of good food. I mean, you'd have to look really close to see what the problem with them is. Uh, and even then, I think you'd have to be an expert or a machine to tell the difference between those parsnips and the parsnips that end up on our supermarket shelves. Their policies are causing hidden mountains of food waste, of which this is one example across the country. These are cabbages, and the problem there was the outer leaves were not up to spec. And this is the entire field. This isn't just a few. The entire field was written off. Now, what's wrong with these apples, Hugh? I don't know. Too delicious? <laughs> too, too, too rosy and gorgeous? Ah, the rosy thing is part of it. So supermarkets actually specify exactly how much redness should appear on different varieties of apple. So these are either too red or not red enough? Exactly. It strikes you immediately as a problem that's solvable. And then you think how mad it is that it still hasn't been solved. Yeah, we've proved that the public will buy so-called cosmetically imperfect fruit and vegetables. In 2012, 300,000 tonnes of ugly, cosmetically imperfect fruit and vegetables from British farms were sold. And was the, there something unusual about that? There yeah. was a really bad harvest. The same thing happened 2000, 2008. We lost 40% of the potatoes in this country. We didn't import any additional potatoes. We just put it into our supermarkets, all those ugly potatoes that previously would have been rejected. Without telling the public? No one even noticed. Really? No one noticed. So, the potato the sales remained the same. No one got more complaints about potatoes. That's you know, a matter of record, is it? Absolutely. The bottom line is that those cosmetic standards are far too strict, and the obvious solution is they need to be relaxed. It doesn't sound that hard, really, when you put it like that. No. We have to tell the supermarkets that to cause waste on this scale is criminal. It's unspeakable, in fact. 
Der Morrisons. In the past year, 70% of farmers who took part in an anonymous survey had issues with the way they're treated by Britain's biggest retailers. Tristram is clear that all the major supermarkets are implicated. But the Hammonds are the only ones speaking out, and they supply just one retailer, Morrison's. So for now, I'm putting the spotlight on them. Well, I've had a pretty swift reply from Morrison's, which is great. And it's quite brief, which is never a bad thing. Please, would you ask the producer to get in touch with me so I can understand the issue in more detail? I've, I've got a couple of issues here. <laughs> he wants to talk to the producer. That's you. He thinks I'm not good enough. He thinks, perhaps he thinks I don't understand the issues. If, if he's going to understand the issues, he needs a proper producer, not just a pretty face. It's not that complicated. Supermarkets are wasting a phenomenal amount of food. And what are we going to do about it? Hi, it's Hugh Fernie Whittingstall here, James. I hope you don't mind that it's, it's me and not my producer. So you think there is a possibility of a, of a filmed interview with someone from Morrison's uh, at the farm in Norfolk that we visited? That's terrific. Thank you. Bye-bye. I have to say, almost too easy for me. I was hoping for a bit more combat, you know. It isn't in the bag, but it's promising. And if Morrison step up and really take on the waste problem, then I think we can push the other supermarkets to follow. But supermarkets are not the only corporate culprits wasting food on our high street. The catering industry throws away the equivalent of two billion meals every year. Wrapped up in that grim statistic are millions of our farm animals. Fast food chicken is a particularly pernicious problem. It takes at least 15 minutes to fry chicken pieces on the bone. And because nobody wants to wait for fast food, it has to be ready before customers walk in. And whenever too much chicken gets cooked, the extra is destined for the bin. I just want to find out a little bit more about how much chicken is being wasted by the fast food industry. And I think the best way to start off is by asking the people who are selling it. Chicken Valley's policy is two hours and then they throw it away, but they reckon they only throw away a few pieces a day. Do you have to throw away a lot of chicken every day? Not a lot. Like how much a day? He thinks he's very good at knowing when he's busy and so never more than 10 pieces a day. How much do you have to throw away every day? Two bags. Two dustbins. Yeah. Definitely seems to be KFC that are a bit more gung-ho about what they throw away. And they throw away regularly throughout the day, and at the end of the day, maybe there's a couple of bins full. We eat over 80 million fast food chickens a year, and KFC sell far more of them than anybody else. So I'm wondering if they're wasting more too. KFC waste. But there are no official figures about just how much of that finger-licking chicken is ending up in the bin. So I'm relying on second-hand information. There's a figure that keeps cropping up online, and I've seen it in several articles and in various Twitter conversations. And it's reported that KFC are wasting three tonnes of chicken a year per branch. And there are 850 branches in the UK. So, 850 stores times 3,000 kilos of wasted chicken gives me 2,550,000 kilos of chicken that's being wasted by KFC a year. I can say for certain that one kilo of chicken represents at least one bird. So that is over two and a half million birds a year that are being farmed, raised for Kentucky Fried Chicken, are being slaughtered, processed, battered, diced, fried, put out into the warming tray, and then they go straight to the bin. Two and a half million chickens that get farmed but never eaten. KFC are part of one of the largest restaurant groups in the world, worth over 20 billion pounds. And they were quick to agree to give me an interview. 
So perhaps they already have this whole waste thing under control. I must admit, I'm actually feeling quite nervous today. I didn't get a lot of sleep last night. My heart rate is up, my mouth is a bit dry. I think there's something about the sheer size of this organization. KFC, they're a huge global player. I feel a little daunted to be taking them on. I was expecting that they'd want the interview to be at KFC HQ, but they've invited me to a modest branch under the Heathrow Airport flight path. I'm meeting their head of health, safety and environment, Janet Cox. Well, I've got a few more minutes before I'm due to meet Janet from KFC in the store here. I'm just checking up on the website. If we haven't sold a product within 90 minutes of it being cooked, we will withdraw it from sale. In the past, this has meant some chicken is discarded, even though it's still perfectly fine to eat. In the past, that suggests unambiguously that the problem is solved. Is it really? Have I come here to hear about how KFC have already solved their waste problem? I can't wait to find out. Hi, Janet. I'm Hugh. The first thing Janet wants me to know is that the figures I got hold of on the internet have been misreported. It is true that 2.7 tonnes of food is wasted by each store, but it's not all chicken. Just less than half of that is actually chicken. So the other half okay. is made up of various other items that are either go past their use by date or we're just unable to use. I think we can still say that you're throwing away one million birds a year. What do you think of that figure? So you're absolutely right. It, it is a high figure and that is why we're doing everything we can to and looking at different ways and how we can make sure that that chicken is reused in a positive way. It turns out that KFC are piloting a scheme to donate unsold food to local charities. And by happy coincidence, this is one of the stores in that scheme. Chicken that would normally go in the bin is frozen and then collected every week. And you're giving it away. It's all free for collection at the YMCA. Yeah. You're coming back for more. Coming back. Keep it coming, Janet. Do you hear that? Keep that waste coming. These guys love it. So the future of KFC waste redistribution in action. Yes, absolutely. And you can see... How handy that they just happened to pop in when I was here. Absolutely. Giving away unsold food to those in need is a sound policy for big food companies. But I want to know just how ambitious the Colonel's plans are. How many restaurants have now started this redistribution scheme? So we're currently in six restaurants. Out of how many in the UK? So in the UK, at the moment, we have about around 870 KFC restaurants. It's a long way to... You're less than 1%. Where do you want to get to? We want to get to a point where all, as many restaurants as possible... You nearly and... said all there, Janet. <laughs> oh, well, I have What's to... wrong with all? All sounds great to so me. So we do have... We know on the work that we've done over the last year or so that there are a number of restaurants due to location where there are not charities located within a close enough vicinity. So they're going to be harder to crack. They will be harder but to crack. But what commitment can you give me? Can you put a date on when you might get half done? End of 2016? Easily. We, by the end of 2016, we will commit to be in half of our restaurants. Half of your restaurants? Yes. So well over 400. Well, your new ones all the time. So there's probably going to be more than 450 KFCs. By the end of 2016, we'll have a distribution charity thing in place to help deal with the unsold food and prevent it going to waste. That's, our, that's a commitment I've made. You've been very clear, which I wholly applaud, but can I just contrast your clarity with some of the stuff on your website? If we haven't sold a product within 90 minutes, we'll withdraw it from sale. In the past, this has meant some chicken is discarded, even though it's still perfectly fine to eat. The use of the phrase, in the past, it really does imply that you've solved this problem. Whoever actually writes these things, can they take a look at the phrases they've chosen and straighten them out a bit so that people, instead of getting the impression that you've really solved this problem, get the honest confession that you've just started looking at it and you're ambitious, but you've got a long way to go? I'm sure we can do that. It is important that we keep our information up updated on our website to tell our customers and all the general public what we are doing. Well, you couldn't be more on the record about that. So I heartily congratulate you, but look forward very much to my return visit 
and seeing how you're doing on delivering it. Thank you. Thanks very much, Janet. If companies like KFC can make big changes to reduce their waste, then surely the whole food industry can step up to the challenge. And I'll be back to see how they're delivering on their promise. What's sometimes harder to understand is how our own small individual actions can make a big difference. But I'm convinced they really can. And that's what I'm hoping to prove with my rubbish revolution in Prestwich. Morning. Because the biggest single cause of food waste in the UK is still the four million tons that we throw away at home. That's out of date. That can go. Neither did lie. Just forget what's in the fridge, really. Bread, carrots, courgette, pate and tomatoes. Is that all being thrown out? Yes. Twelfth of August. It's only the twelfth of August today you're throwing them out. That can go. That can go. That can go. Bag's getting heavy. We went in a shop yesterday for no reason whatsoever and we came out with a bag full of, of just rubbish. I suspect a little kitchen savvy could save most of us a load of food and a decent pile of cash. So I've persuaded Joanne and her husband Peter to let me try and rescue some of the food they would normally throw away. A lovely home. Thank you. Thank you. This is beautiful. Thank you. One of the reasons I've come to see you is because you say you throw away quite a lot of food. Is that the case? Yes, we do. Yes. Yes, we do. Well, if it's all right with you, I think we should get straight down to business. Okay. And I want to see all the food that you're even thinking about throwing away. Oh, dear. That is a well-stocked fridge, Joanne. <laughs> You've got so much food here. Mm. How big's the family? You, how many kids do you have? <laughs> Just one at home now. <laughs> but unfortunately, my mind still cooks for six of us. Because we have ah. four grown So you're children. three at home cooking for six? Absolutely. No wonder you've got yeah. leftovers. We've got some panini. Oh, a, a slightly stale panini. Uh, some mixed salad there that we've got. Always the one that gets left over, yeah. Hummus. Wrinkly tomatoes, tomatoes, wrinkly. Seeded batch. Okay, gosh. Um, I'm, I'm running out of hands now. Oh. Don't worry. Absolutely. I've got no it. Problem. I've got it. No problem. Let's get it on the table and then I'll rescue the grapes. Joanne was about to throw out at least 15 quid's worth of food. That sounds like a lot, but if she's doing this every week, it's only just over the national average. And most of this haul is still perfectly good to eat. The hummus is a few days past its, its yeah. date, OK? <laughs> As is everything. As is everything. Have a sniff. It smells like hummus to me, Hugh. It does. It, it just fine. smells like it did it when it was fine. fresh. It smells fine, doesn't yeah, it? it does. And I'd eat that as is, raw. This is clearly fine. It's gone a bit discoloured, though, hasn't it? That's just a little bit of oxidation because you've taken the lid off the package. So that's definitely back in the fridge. Thanks. Hardly needed to go shopping. Joanne spends up to six quid a week on cartons of smoothies. But it's so easy to make your own. Just trim off the bruised bits of your tired fruit and whiz the rest in a blender with yoghurt or juice. Any extra fruit can be saved in the freezer, where it'll keep for weeks. And because it's end up in the next smoothie, you don't have to be fussy about small blemishes. What do you think might happen if you ate a grape with a little brown spot on it? What's your worst nightmare? Uh, actually, I suppose my worst nightmare would be to get some horrific disease from it, some okay. illness, some sickness. So yeah. if I promise you it won't do you any harm at all, let's just judge it on taste. OK. Go for it. <laughs> actually, it's delicious. For the last couple of years, Joanne has been unwell so Peter has taken on most of the domestic duties. Pete has been an absolute rock and he has taken over, not only going to work full time, but actually doing a lot of the cooking as well. Oh, well, that's, that's very good of you. Well done I'm for that. I'm up. You've stepped up. <laughs> <laughs> I'm feeling 100% better and I would love to actually get back into cooking a little bit now. What am I actually doing to prepare these beautiful wrinkly offerings? They don't look brilliant, do they? 
No. But there's a really good trick. Have you got a grater? Yes, yes, I have a grater. Ah! There, what do you think of that? I think that is fantastic. Absolutely fantastic. Clever yeah. trick, huh? So from those three wrinkly, squashy tomatoes, we've got this lovely pulp. You can rescue almost any thin-bound, bendy old veg with a simple soup. And even salad leaves that have lost their crunch can go in. I reckon the chickpeas and garlic in the hummus should give the soup more body and a nice kick. Wow, look at that. It's like cream. Can I tell you something? I've never put hummus in a soup before in my life. Really? Never. Hey, I love it. That's brilliant. Yeah. Stale bread is better for croutons than fresh bread because it absorbs less oil when fried. Ah, oh, wow! Sweet. You made yourself a little crouton love heart. It's a piece of fried bread. It is. <laughs> You're right. In Manchester, it's fried bread. I would never believe if somebody showed me those ingredients earlier on that it would it end up tasting like it? this. No. Do you think you will do more cooking now with food that you would otherwise have chucked? Yeah. Uh, really? It's true. Yes, I do. I actually think this is perhaps the impetus I've needed to get me going uh, today, so thank you very much. Well, that would be brilliant. If that's the case, I'll be thrilled. Yeah. <laughs> Cheers. Good thank you. Oh, that's good. I bet you don't throw a lot of that away. No, there's none of that goes out <laughs> of date. <laughs> With a little effort, I'm sure we can all waste less and save more but I can't be checking the bins and fridges of all the houses in my Prestwich experiment. So I've started a social media page. Waste Not Prestwich is officially up and running. The local community have really engaged in social media and they've been talking to each other on Twitter and swapping tips on Facebook and I've been posting a few tips of my own and a few recipes and it's all got really, really busy. And that's very exciting, and it suggests that some of them, at least, are really, really engaged. Just been in the fridge, pulled out the lettuce, and it's looking a little sad. We have a top tip. If you add it to a bowl of water with ice in it, it should be nice and crisp again. Waste not one, not the. And lovely Joanne has just posted a little video of herself making a smoothie from that fruit that she was about to bin. Uh, have we got a dog that measures 100 millilitres? Don't, please don't measure 100 mil. You, no, you don't have to measure 100 mil, Joanne. I shouldn't have said that. I should have said, slosh a bit of orange juice in. 100 millilitres. It's, that, it's not that often that I get to see somebody following one of my recipes on film, and I have to resist the temptation to, to shout at them. But it, it, it makes me, it's quite, a, it's quite a lesson, actually. I'm hoping we can create a recipe for change in Prestwich that can be copied across the UK. Delicious. <laughs> in the end, saving money by keeping edible food out of the bin is just common sense. But I think it might be a bit harder to get people to improve their recycling. Until 15 years ago, most of our rubbish was in landfills like this one. Burying hundreds of millions of tons of rubbish in holes in the ground is not a great idea. So the government slapped off the taps on landfill, and today more and more of our rubbish is being incinerated to make electricity. But when it comes to reusable materials like plastic, glass, and metal, incineration is a waste of good resources. And yet, even after years of campaigning, persuade us all to recycle properly, over a quarter of those surveyed say they're not convinced it makes a difference. So over the last few weeks, I've been recruiting the sceptics of Prestwich to see if I can change their minds. Do you wonder what actually happens to your recycling? If you do do it, where does it go? Where does it end up? Yes. 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 Yeah. yes. Well, that would if you saw it, what was actually happening, then you'd actually believe that what they're telling you because when they say oh we're recycling this percentage of stuff that you think oh are we really because we don't know do we we're just being yeah. told figures by a council that not an awful lot of people trust in general anyway do you think it would make you feel better about recycling if you knew what did happen to it 
Yeah. Yeah, you'd have well, knowledge of it. You'd, you'd know that you were doing yeah, the right thing, you, maybe, or whether you're doing the wrong thing. I don't know what goes on with it. I've never been explained. Yeah. Yeah. I'm hoping these recycling deniers can be converted with a tour of the place they don't think exists, a materials recovery facility. Based on the conversations I've had with these guys so far, I think it's clear who the toughest nut to crack is going to be. It's Kelly from the CAF. So you're not convinced that, that it's even being recycled? No. It all ends up in the same yeah. place? They're lying to you? Yeah, like always. Never been anywhere like this before? Nope. Nope? Nope. Each council in the UK has its own rules about what can be recycled. One in seven don't want any glass. Others won't take card. Here, they want your plastic bottles, but not your plastic bags. But wherever you live, the contents of your recycling bin will end up in a facility like this. And the first job is to remove by hand all the items that aren't meant to be there. So the stuff that's coming into this bit of the plant looks like a raggedy old mess, but it is the contents of those recycling is, bins, yes. isn't it? Yes. Things that are going to get stuck and things that are going to mess up the quality of the recycling. Frying pan. A bit of a shower just came through there. But it is predominantly tins, plastic bottles and glass bottles that's it coming is. in. Can we go through, Denise? So there's not quite so much to see here because it's encased in the machinery of a really powerful magnet that's just lifting anything that's steel. That's all disappearing at this stage, heading off to a different part of the plant. And then the steel from this point on is gone. Next, the rubbish bounces through a machine that smashes the glass to smithereens. The little fragments drop through the gaps and onto another conveyor belt. All that should be left now is aluminium and plastic. Right here is another magnet, and that repels the aluminium, and it's going to be heading into that cabin there, and there's a guy in there who's just doing the final bit of sorting, anything that's got through to there that isn't aluminium, and then it'll all get squished up into these lovely bales of cans. I really want you all to have a good look in here, because it's a bit of quite cool technology. The plastic bottles that are left are mainly divided into two categories. They're either clear or they're opaque. And there's a laser in there that can tell the difference. And when the laser spots an opaque bottle, that squirty noise, that is a jet of air blasting the opaque bottle into a separate track from the clear bottle. And you can see that happening if you look down here. Once the materials are all sorted, they are sellable commodities again. So if my gang and others like them really did mend their recycling ways, how much difference would it make? Well, if the whole of Greater Manchester could be persuaded to put stuff in the right bins, it would save the local councils £25 million a year. If you multiply that across the country, we could pay for an extra 25,000 nurses. So, do you think spending time here today has changed the way you think about recycling? It has a bit, yeah, yeah. But it's still not the finished product, is it? It's just shown it's been sorted. Ah, so you think now that they've done this with it, yeah. maybe they just chuck it in a hole in the ground? A neater hole? Yeah. <laughs> Are you still a bit unconvinced about whether this can become anything worthwhile? Yeah, yeah. It still just looks like a pile of rubbish. It is a pile of rubbish. And you still think that should, basically, that should now be thrown away? Yeah. Would you like to see something made out of this stuff that yeah, doesn't I'd look like or to, smell yeah, like yeah, rubbish? Yeah, the outcome of it. All right, come with me. Come and have a look. One last thing. Everything we make from recycled stuff saves us from mining more raw materials from the planet's dwindling resources. And as the technology improves, our recycling can be combined with other materials in all kinds of unexpected ways. And this is the end product You're of recycling. That is made from plastic bottles. Really? I can't believe that. I can't believe it, actually. I really can't. Plastic bottles. Plastic bottles. Feel that? I'm impressed. They're very, very good quality as well. Recycled steel. Soup cans. You know, tins of beans. Yeah, I never would have thought of that. This last bit has just made me impressed, because they do close. 
OK, as long as you go on recycling those bottles, you can keep the coat. Oh, thank you. My band of rubbish recyclers have promised to change their ways. And I'm hoping they'll spread the word through the rest of Prestwich. And while the rubbish revolution on Gardner Road seems to be taking off, I want to get back on the trail of the supermarkets and their wasteful cosmetic standards. It's not a pretty sight for my eyes, anyway. No. No. We have to tell the supermarkets that to cause waste on this scale is criminal. I emailed Morrisons to request an interview, and initially they seemed really enthusiastic. Hi, human team. We're looking into ways that we might be able to help Tataset Farm and perhaps involve Hugh in any possible NPD solution. Pretty sure that's new product development. That sounds to me like Morrisons might be offering me my very own parsnip ready meal range. Very exciting. But over the next couple of months, I couldn't pin them down. And then they told me the Hammonds no longer wanted us to film on the farm. OK, this just in from Morrisons. The farmer has told us that he's unable to take part in the filming because he's too busy. I was getting confused because Ollie told me it was Morrisons okay. who were dodging the interview. We heard from Morrisons that you, you, you didn't want to film anymore, and I just wondered what's, what's changed. But when you say, when you say pressure from Morrisons, what, what sort of pressure? They ju they've said they don't want you to do the interview on telly. Ah. Morrison strenuously deny that they put any pressure on the Hammonds not to film with us. But eventually, Ollie did pull out of the filming, saying he would only talk to us on camera after the last parsnip crop had been harvested and paid for. Soon after, I got this message from Morrison's. We've carefully considered your offer of the opportunity to talk about parsnips and have decided that it's not one for us. I'll explain why. Several years ago, we did introduce wonky parsnips into our stores, but they simply didn't sell. Customers didn't want them. It's so annoying. And, and you know, it's also, it seems to me to be silly because engagement is the key here. No one expects the supermarkets to instantly have all the solutions to this very, very difficult problem. But running away from the problem, for me, that's not acceptable. So I'm not taking no for an answer. Our supermarkets claim that their customers just won't buy less than perfect veg. But I don't buy what they're telling us. I think we're more broad-minded than that, and I want to prove it. And where better to do it than in front of a busy Morrison store? And how better to brand my parsnips with this very agreeable colour scheme? Roll up, roll up. Morrison's customers. Come on, everyone. They're all rejects. Really? It's silly. They're perfectly fine. Would it surprise you if I told you these are rejects? Wow. It's what, wrong. What, it's wrong. It's very wrong. It's ridiculous. Absolutely oh, ridiculous. I would, I would absolutely cook oh, with that parsnip. Okay. What is wrong with that Just one? Just a little bit of bruising yeah. on the top. They shouldn't be wasted, so... They shouldn't be wasted. Yeah. You hear that, Morrison? <laughs> these are your customers. Yes. They shouldn't be wasted. No, definitely yeah. not. Are you a Morrison's customer? Yeah. And yeah. what do you yeah. think? Don't throw them away. No, don't throw them away. We'll buy them. Are you sure you don't have a problem with that? No, no. I don't even know the difference. Everybody I met said they would happily buy a cosmetically challenged parsnip. But the other reason I'm here is to nudge Morrisons into re-engaging and giving me that long-awaited interview. Hello, everybody. Just to say that all Morrisons customers are offered a free bag of parsnips. Don't go home empty-handed. Good morning, Morrison's customers. Three bags of parsnips for Morrison's customers here this morning. How are you? I'm good, how are you? Yeah, really good. Are you from Morrison's? Yes. Yeah. Are you the manager of the store? I am, yeah. Terrific, OK, great. Well, it's really good to talk to you. Yeah, no, that's good. You know what, you're the first person from Morrison's I've been able to talk to, and I've been trying for four months now. Oh, OK. We are here out of frustration because they haven't been able to give us someone to talk on camera. Would well, you want me to go and I'll tell you what you meant uh, By all means, if you, think you, if you think you can get someone down, that would be great. I'll, I'll, get, I'll make a few calls now. 
very friendly uh, store manager for Morrison's, very helpful. Just going to call the press office, see, see if he can arrange uh, uh, an on-camera interview this morning. Who knows, might happen. Within a couple of hours, I got an email from the press office suggesting an interview could be back on the cards. I hope so, because after today, I'm convinced that Britain's shoppers will buy, cook and eat the perfectly decent produce that our supermarkets are rejecting. My goodness, you're eating a raw parsnip already. That is a vote of confidence, is it not? David Potts, the Morrison's boss, says that he listens to his customers. All the supermarket bosses say they listen to their customers. Well, today, I've been listening to Morrison's customers and the message is very clear. Produce like this is perfectly good. Throwing it away is madness. I think that is a very clear message. The public seem to be responding to my war on waste. And that's massively encouraging, because what's good for waste okay. is good for all of us. Hi, Joanne, how are you? We saved about £25. Just by being a bit more careful and not throwing stuff away. Yeah, and I actually think we probably could have saved a little bit more, but I'm learning. What brings you to these neck of the woods? I'd like a quick word with you. May I borrow <laughs> Kelly for a second, Carol? Of course you can. Who's that? I can't believe you filmed that secretly. <laughs> food in the food. Mm -hmm. Paper in the paper. Wait, wait for it. How do you know what's coming up? You're that confident. I've done it. You're I've that done confident it. I've been, you've been good. Yeah, I'm impressed with myself. I'm incredibly I'm really impressed. I'm really impressed with myself. I'm happy that I'm doing it, and obviously it learnt me a lot that day when I seen what it could be made into. I need a bigger food bin now. I think you do, yeah. since all the food's actually yeah. going in it. Yeah. Done it! <laughs> Next, I tackle our growing mountain of discarded clothes. How long do you think it takes Britain to throw away that many clothes? Two or three days. Two or three days? Yeah. Six hours long? Six hours. You're getting close. Morrison's finally opened their doors to discuss the waste problem. I've got a big wodge of cancelled orders. What's happening here? But I'm sorry to say that it's too late for the Hammonds. After 30 odd years, it's now coming to an end today. Who do we need more? The people who grow our food or the people who sell it to us? I think it's the people who grow our food. I'm spoiling for a fight now. I'm, 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 I don't know, I'm just, I'm fuming.